Greetings WordPressers, Jackson here. Welcome to the channel once again. Glad to have you as always. Now here's another quick uh, block theming quick tip for you. Now patterns, amazing. One of the cornerstones of the new block theming world we are now living in. And you could do so many awesome things with them. There's one thing that's a bit what well, the bugs me at least is that when you go into the pattern library when you're in a page you'll see in there all the patterns that come with the theme all the patterns from the your custom theme you've you've built but by default wordpress shows <laughs> all these all the patterns that are on the wordpress.org site the the pattern repository which is a bit nuts because if you've built out a beautiful custom site or you're using a beautiful custom, uh, you know, a beautiful theme, why on earth would you allow your user, your client, your admin of the site to choose completely random, randomly designed patterns that have got nothing to do with your website and allow them to plonk them on a page or in a post? Uh, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I can see the logic. It's, you know, it's essentially a, a way for, you know, users to look through a, a whole library and, you know, the same as Elementor or, or Spectra or, or any of the hundreds of thousands of different page builder plugins there are. And I've never, I've never seen the point of having like massive libraries if you're handing over a site to a client and come on. So yeah, my view is let's get rid of them. And there's a really easy code snippet that we can slide into our themes to make sure that we keep control of those rando patterns. So here we are, a quick tip for you, get rid of the randos. Okay, let us banish those rando patterns. So I've got a 2024 pretty standard fresh install going on here. A few pages and menu tweaks, that kind of thing. Um, let's head over to the back end and let's go to pages and we're gonna add a new page and we'll call it defaults. And we'll just publish that for a second. So we've got our starting point. Now, if we open up our pattern or our block inserter and we go to patterns, we will see that if we say choose a call to action, we see these lovely craft, beautifully crafted patterns, these sections that we can just drop into our site. Beautiful, we can scroll through them. And any of these would look absolutely gorgeous until something weird happens and we're seeing a ton of what just randos what is going on i don't want to say when i pass a theme over to a, you know a project over to a client am i going to let them have access to rando patterns i don't think so let's get rid of them now let's get into the code it's pretty simple stuff i've got a child theme running on here Let's uh, just show you that appearance themes. So I've got this child theme. If you have, if you don't know, if you haven't seen the video, it's up there in the card to show you and describes exactly how to create a child theme and get your styles in there. That sort of thing. Go check it out. But I've already got this set up and I've got the my child theme child theme of 2024 open here and it does indeed have a functions with some of those functions we created on a previous tutorial. So we're just going to add couple of break returns there and some code and it's pretty simple stuff it's just one action that basically does what it says on the tin remove theme support for core block patterns let's get it in let's save that up let's get back to our page and let us refresh that so the php it gets reloaded and we go back to our block inserter now and go to our patterns, go to our calls to actions. And here's our beautiful 2024 patterns and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And thank the heavens above, no more rando patterns for our clients or users to get super creative with. So yeah, tons of little tweaks like that required when you block theming. If you want another one, there's one right there. If you'd like a little bit more quick tip action, but until next time, I shall see you later.